Hi everyone, um, okay, thanks for checking out this video. Um, so uh, in the past couple of videos, we've been talking about um, the one gene model, uh, the two gene activation model, and the two gene repression model. So now that we've covered um, the ways that a gene can activate and repress another gene, um, we're ready to start talking about sort of uh, more complex gene networks now. So today I'm gonna to be showing you guys um, a model with three genes kind of our, our first uh, little bit of a complex network we're going to talk about. Um, and this is going to be what's called a negative feedback oscillator. So, um, so yeah, so let's get started. So we'll start off with kind of our, our usual, our usual setup. Uh, so this will be the DNA here. I'm going to have one gene um, called gene one. Um, another gene here, gene two, and then a third gene, uh, gene three. So like we've been doing, if you guys have been watching the, the previous videos, you know that each one um, is expressed as a protein. Okay. And then each protein uh, is broken down with some degradation rate over time. So that's kind of just how we've been doing it uh, with all of the models so far. Now let's talk about um, the ways that these genes will interact with each other. So we're going to say that gene one activates gene two. So we'll we'll draw that like this. So like we discussed before, that just means that gene one um, facilitates the transcription of gene two. So it has a uh, it's, it's a positive interaction. So gene one is. Uh, is uh, helping gene two get transcribed. And we'll say that gene two does the same for gene three. It activates gene three. So we'll draw that like that. So same thing. So gene two uh, facilitates the transcription of gene three. And then we're gonna say that gene three actually um, comes back to repress the transcription of gene one. So if you remember from the, the previous videos, this, this just means that gene three is uh, inhibiting the expression of gene one. It's repressing it. It's, uh, it's blocking the transcription of gene one. Um, so if you, see, if you see in the name, uh, the negative feedback, this last step here is actually the negative feedback um, because it's, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's sort of cascading. The transcription is sort of like cascading, like gene one is being transcribed and then activating gene two, which is transcribed and then uh, activating gene three. But then gene three um, is negatively feeding back to uh, gene one. This is the negative feedback that we're talking about. So when we actually do the simulation, you guys are gonna see the oscillations that this causes. So it's gonna kind of look like uh, it's gonna kind of look like this for each of the genes. That's what it means for them to be oscillating. And you can sort of think about why um, if you sort of just wrap your brain around what will be happening here. Um, but it'll be easier to see, if you, if you can't see why that's gonna happen yet, it'll be easier for you guys to see like once we actually write the uh, simulations. And uh, by the way, just speaking of this uh, this oscillator model, there's a very famous, um, very famous like computational biology paper I should tell you guys about. It's called the uh, the Goodwin oscillator paper. It's by this guy named uh, Brian Goodwin. So let's write his name here. Um, published in uh, 1965. And yeah, so his model was uh, was pretty similar to what we're going to be talking about. But I've made a couple like small changes just to uh, to kind of fit things into what we've been what we've been doing. But his, his model was very similar, and I think it's just worth noting just because of how uh, how famous it is in systems biology. So I'll put a link to his paper um, in, the, in the description if you guys want to check that out. But yeah, the uh, it's called the Goodwin Oscillator, pretty famous in systems biology, so it might be worth reading up on. Um, okay, so before we get into the uh, actual coding simulations, let's take a look at some of the math of this first. Um, okay, so this is the uh, system of ODEs we're going to be using to model the, uh, the three gene... Um, negative feedback oscillator. So I realized that if you if you look at this like when you when you look at this it kind of looks like uh, like oh my gosh like it looks like uh, really a lot. 
But um, if you guys have been watching the past couple uh, past couple lessons, then if you look closely, you can see that there's actually nothing new in here. So everything in here has already been uh, covered in the past uh, the past couple lessons on the uh, activation and uh, repression models. So um, it's kind of uh, like we've been going over. Yeah, it's like the the K terms here are just the uh, maximum uh, production terms for each gene. And then we have our um, gamma degradation terms. So these are pretty straightforward. And then, uh, of course, the degradation is multiplied by um, the amount, the level of the gene itself. And uh, and then for our, our Hill functions, um, so starting with, we'll start with gene two. So, so gene one, like we said, is going to activate gene two. So we just have this term here is our activation uh, Hill function. So that was what we went over um, a couple lessons ago. So this will just, as we get more and more of gene one, this whole thing will go to one. And eventually it'll be like almost one times uh, whatever our maximum, our maximum uh, production rate is. And then so it's going to be the same here. Gene two will then activate um, gene three. So same thing, we just have our activation uh, hill function here. So as so we get more and more of gene two, this will go to one, and then it'll be almost one times uh, K sub three, which is our maximum, uh, maximum production rate for gene three. And then, so gene three will come back around and uh, will inhibit gene one. So this is the uh, negative feedback that we were talking about um, so yeah, so this is just our, uh, our repression, uh, hill function here. So as we get more and more of gene three, so this will actually start at one, when we have zero of gene three, this will be C to the N over C to the N. So this will just be one if we have no, uh, gene three. So it'll be one times, uh, K sub one. But as we get more and more of gene three, this, uh, approaches zero. It gets uh, lower and lower until it approaches zero. And so eventually that will sort of, uh, that'll sort of um, be almost zero times our uh, production rate. So that's where uh, the repression comes in. Um, so yeah, so I mean, yeah, like this, this system looks really uh, complicated at first, but if we look closely, like all these things are just pretty simple things that we've covered. Uh, so this is what I was saying before, like once, once we learn like, sort of the, the simple things, like just the uh, central dogma and then the activation and repression models. Um, using those like pretty simple things, we can start to build out like pretty complicated systems. I mean, this isn't like super complicated yet, but uh, but I mean, even this is like, I mean, you guys are gonna see when we do the simulation, it, it does have like interesting properties. Um, so even, even something like this could be useful. Um, but yeah, it's built out of all these just like very simple parts, like just the simple production terms, degradation terms, and then these uh, hill functions. So, um, so yeah, it's, I mean, this is the cool thing about like system biology is you can sort of, yeah, start with like simple components and build them up into something cool and, and interesting. Um, so yeah, so uh, thanks for watching everyone. Uh, next video, we're going to be actually uh, programming the simulation of this. So uh, see you next time.